Hi guys. So we are on chapter 14, the review for the chapter, the ready to move on, page 447. And the first thing that we're doing is putting together our scatter plot for this one. So we have quartz at the bottom. Um, let me use my purple because that'll show up better. Zero, two, four, and six. And then going up, one, two, and three for how much it costs. It wants us to graph our data. So number of quarts, one. It's the line in between the zero and the two, okay? So they only labeled every other number, but every single number is there. <coughs> So we go to the one and then we go all the way up to the two and we put a dot there. Okay, next one it says two is a dollar five. So two and then up to the dollar and a half. Three is 125. So three and then halfway in between the one and the half. Okay, so right there. Four. A dollar ten goes about right there, so a little lower than where the three is. Five is at one, and six is at ninety-five cents, so just a little bit below one. All right, do you see where those are at? Graph it that way. We always go the first number, so in this case, the number of quarts first, and then how much it costs going up. Number two, describe the association you see between the number of quarts purchased and price per quart. Okay, so pause it on that if you need to finish the graph. I'm going on to the sheet of paper for answering the questions. Number two, the association that we see between them. It has a negative association. That means it goes down. If it goes down, it's negative. If it goes up, it's positive. It has a negative association. Why? The more quartz you buy, the less it costs per quart. So that's why it's that way. Number 14.2, draw a trend line for this scatter plot. Okay, so Pause it if you need to. I'm going to put your book down on it for a second. If we go into this that they have right there and we try to draw a line, I'm going to draw a line that looks about like that. That seems to be about halfway between everything. It's hard to do a trend line on this particular one. Ooh. And then as soon as I let go of the book, it slides out. Okay, so that it's, it's a trend line that's about like that. Write an equation for this trend line. Okay, so it goes through point. Uh, 30, 40, okay, goes through point zero thirty five. So I got two points going on here. I got point zero thirty five. Let me write those on a different sheet of paper for the moment. And point, what's another point I got going on there? Uh, looks like right there. I got one going through twenty. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going through 035. I'm going through 350. Oh boy. 350 across first, then up and down. 350. Oh wow. Okay. Then I have one that looks like it's going through 20, comma, halfway between 5 and 10. 20, halfway between 5 and 10. That would be a 7.5. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my sheet of paper so we can actually write out the equation and have enough space for it and all that good stuff. All right. So my points no, sorry, four, are 35, zero, and 27.5. And then to find the line, we need to do m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so I'm going to go with this being x1, y1, and this being x2, y2, just for the sake of argument. All right, that's just how it's going to be. So then we have y2, which is 7.5 minus y1, which is zero, over x2, which is 20, minus x1, which is 35. So 7.5 minus zero is still 7.5. 20 minus 35 is a negative 15. Um, I am going to go ahead and divide that out because we already have a decimal. 7.5 divided by 15 gives me a half. So that's equal to negative 0 0.5, okay? So that's what I end up with when I do the entire thing. I end up with half, okay? So when I write out my equation, my actual equation, I have y equals mx plus b. It becomes the y, which in this case I'm going to use the zero, equals m, which is negative a half, times x, which is 35, plus b. Okay? Let me go on to my calculator again to do the times 35, which is a negative 17.5. So zero equals negative 17.5 plus B. In order to get it on the opposite side, because that 17.5 is bugging that B, I need to change it from a negative into a positive and get rid of it. And, and zero plus anything is 17 is um, the number it is. So zero plus 17.5 is in fact 17.5. Rewriting it entirely, y equals a negative 0.5x plus 17.5. So that is our trend line. That's where our trend line actually is. Number five says use this equation to predict wind chill to the nearest degree for 60 miles per hour. Okay. So number five. <clears throat> wants us to take this equation. So actually, you know what? Let me write number five up here. Okay? Wind chill is the y. So negative 0 0.5 in place of the x, it wants 60. Plus 17.5. So let us see. 0 0.5 times 60 equals negative 30 plus 17.5. So negative 30 
plus 17 and 5 tenths is equal to a negative 12 and 5 tenths. All right, so that ends up being about how many degrees? We think it's going to be negative 12 and a half degrees uh, Fahrenheit at that point. Number six, how can you use scatter plots to solve real world problems? Well, we actually use them all the time to solve real world problems. It's one of the number one ways that we figure things out in science because most of the time we can't actually figure something out. We have to do our best guess of what's going to happen. So we actually use these all the time in real life. And the way that um, we end up using it to solve real world problems is um, I put down all the data I have and try to see um, and try to see where it seems to be going. Now, I am not going to have you write this down, but if you bother to watch my entire rant about scatter plots in the real world and using trends to try to figure it out, I would like to point out, I would like to remind you that um, the further from the information you have, you get, the further away you get. So talking about what's going to happen tomorrow based upon what happened the past month, you can probably figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. But trying to figure out what's going to happen 10 years from now based upon what you've seen in the past month, there's a very high chance that you're going to be wrong. A um, hundred years from now, you're almost certainly wrong. A thousand years from now, even if you take the last 10 years worth of data, you are almost definitely wrong, which is why in your science books, when it sits here and it starts giving calculations for things, it sometimes sits here and goes, oh yeah, you know, sometime between a hundred thousand and a million years from now, this is going to happen. It's because they can't get any closer than that. They just don't have information close enough to that time to figure out any of it. Um, farmer's almanacs work by knowing what happened. Pause it if you need to. Farmer's almanacs work by knowing what happened the previous 20, 30 years and going, okay, so at about this time, this happened. Based on what I've seen, this is what it looks like it's going to be next year. And they're actually very accurate, but it's because they're using a massive amount of data to predict a relatively small time frame. The smaller the time frame is that you're trying to predict, the easier it is to predict it. So if I was trying to predict what temperature it was going to be at five o'clock tonight based upon the entire, based upon data from the entire month or whatever, I could probably do that. And I'd probably be pretty correct. But if I was trying to predict what the temperature would be at five o'clock, sorry, 10 years from now, I might be a bit more off on that particular one. Just a second. As you saw, I need to uh, get my battery pack. All right. Sorry for rambling back to this. Uh, page 448 now. We're on the other side. Consider the equation in each function. Is the function a linear function? Would it make a straight line? Yes or 
no. Okay, so let's look at these ones. Y equals eight over X B. Y equals X minus five C. Y equals negative four X plus one. Now, what they're trying to see is if you remember what the equation is, what the setup is for a linear function. Okay, they wanna see if you remember this. So we're looking at, actually give me a second. So all that they're asking is, is it in this form? Y equals mx plus b. If it is not in this form, it is not a linear function. So for this one, I'm skipping A for the moment on purpose, okay? For this one, we have a Y equals, our M is a invisible one, okay? It's not actually there, but we know it's there. X plus, or rather in this case, minus B. So this one, yes, this most certainly is a linear function. In this one, y equals m, which is a negative four, x plus b, which is a one. So it is. In this one, we have y equals, and then eight divided by x. That is not in this form. So that is not a linear function. Number two, the scatter plot shows the relationship between the sizes and costs of televisions at an appliance store. Write true or false for each statement. There is a collect cluster of data points near, okay, so I'm gonna go A, B, C. There is a cluster of data points near 55,650. So let's see where 55,650 is. Across halfway between 50 and 60 is 55. And then going up to where 650 is, about right there. Is that a cluster? Nope. That is not a cluster, so that is false. B, the point 50, 1000 appears to be an outlier. So let's go over to 50, all the way up to 1000. Do you see how that is? Is there anything near it? Nothing near it. So yes, it is. That is true. It is an outlier. Letter C. There is a positive correlation, positive association between size and price. Does it seem to be getting more expensive the larger that it is? Yes, it does. So that's true. Number three, draw a trend line on the scatter plot. How, does your, how well does your trend line fit the data? Okay, this one's kind of an annoying one to try to draw a trend line for. Because when I get my straight line out, let me get out my straight line. When I get my completely straight line out, come on. I have to kind of, there, no, I have too much below it. I have too much above it. No, I don't like that point at all. Okay, so let's try doing it starting down here, going around there-ish. And then I have all of these points that are up here in La La Land and don't seem to be wanting to do anything with anybody. All these points up here. Um, so 
does my draw a trend line. So I drew a trend line. It lines up with most of my information. How well does the trend line actually fit the data? Ah, uh, do you see that big, huge mess up there? So what I'm going to write down is that number three, it doesn't fit it well because the largest TVs suddenly get very expensive. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah, size of TVs. It doesn't fit it well because the largest TVs suddenly get very expensive. Number four, this scatter plot shows the relationship between the number of laps Cla blah, 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 Claudia swims and the time needed to swim those laps. Write an equation of the trend line and explain what the slope of the trend line represents in this particular situation. So an equation of the trend line. Well, it looks like the first point that I'm going to use, so I have to find two points. So for number four, I'm going to use point zero zero, and I'm going to use point something else that's an actual point. Um, you serious? Uh, it looks like two two is a pretty, I, I know it's not actually 2-2, two, two, but I'm estimating it's about there, and I think that's as close as we're going to get to an actual point. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is going to be x1, y1. This is going to be x2, y2. <coughs> so y2 is 2 minus 0, y x2 is 2, x1 is 0, 2 over 2, which is equal to 1, which as you can see is not actually what it is. It's a little bit lower than that. Um, <coughs> if it was actually 1, it would be a straight line through every single point, and we would have as many points as we pleased but it's close enough for us to be doing our um, thing, I think. So, y, so we plug it in to the y equals mx plus b format. <coughs> Let's make it easy for ourselves. Zero for y, m is one, x is zero, plus b. So 0 equals 1 times 0, which is 0, plus b. So b equals 0. We don't actually have a b. All right? So when I rewrite this, I get y equals x. That ends up being our equation, y equals x. Um, and then we need to explain what does the slope of the trend line mean in this situation. Uh, the slope is how long by number of laps. Sorry, I'm off the camera. The slope is how long by the number of laps. Okay, the number of laps is one. And that is all for the module review. So talk to you later, guys. You probably have a test coming up on Wednesday. So good luck with that. Bye.